So God gave them over to a depraved mind mm -hmm. so that they would so that they might do what ought not to be done. Uh-huh. Read on. Being filled with all unrighteousness, mm -hmm. fornication, yeah. wickedness, covetousness, <coughs> maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, applicable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they who knowing the judgment of God, mm -hmm, keep going. that they which commit such things are worthy. They that commit such things are worthy of what? Yeah. Not only to do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. If the foundation be broken, where will it shall we stand? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor I, need God I need God to rebuild, to rebuild our foundation. Our foundation. Take your seat. Amen. Rebuilding the broken foundation. Put your seatbelts on. It won't be a ride from Disneyland either, amen. <laughs> Here we find that David had been through conflict. He had been with conflict with his father-in-law, King Saul, and he had been in conflict with surrounding nations and also family conflict. And now the people of God come to David and tell David, said, David, there's some more conflict going on. David, it's time for you to pack up your bags and flee to the mountain. But David, understanding and knowing that trouble doesn't last always, David realized that he could not run from conflict, that he'd know where he went. Conflict will still follow him. So David let the people know that if the foundation be broken, you cannot stand anyhow. David realized that his foundation was sure with God no matter what he had been through in his past, that he had learned how to trust in God no matter what. And David had been through many things and he realized that God was able to bring him out of any and everything and that the enemy could not have him before his time. David knew that his faith was built on a solid, foundation. But as we begin to look around the house and we begin to look in our church, our community, in our nation, not all of us have the same testimony that David has. Many of us, when trials and tribulations come our way, we're ready to give up. We're ready to throw in the towel. We're ready to complain to God, God, why me? And God is echoing back, why not you? <laughs> you want God to just step in and make everything a bed of ease. But did you not know that you will never begin to soar where God wants you to soar until you understand that contrary winds do not keep you down. Contrary winds is what lift you up. Oh, somebody got to hear me up in there. If you would begin to look at the eagle when it gets ready to soar, it does not soar with the wind, but it spreads its wings against the wind because it is the wind that lifts them up to higher heights. Yeah. See, it's not the storms that you 
you are going through that has grounded you, but it's the storm that you're going through that will lift you to another level in God. We have to understand here that God has built us on a solid foundation. And because he's built us on a solid foundation, no matter what comes, no matter what goes, we're able to stand if we learn how to stand still. Too many of us want to run away from conflict. We want to run away from strife. We want to run away from trials and tribulation. But like God told Moses when the children of Israel was up against the mountain and the Red Sea and the children of Egypt coming against them and the Red Sea was before them, he just told them to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And some of us, we have to learn how to stand still and trust in God no matter what come our way. But as I begin to look around our nation, my spirit has become very disturbed because we as Christians have not stood up for what is Right. Yes, we will stand still, but we allow the enemy to do any and everything that is causing our nation to become immoral and not what God called us to be. If you look, the foundation of our nation has been built in the past of faith in God. And doing his will, many people came over from other lands of Europe and to come to this new nation called America because of freedom, to escape religious persecution, and to build up Christian values. Our nation was built on a firm foundation. A foundation that no other nation could not deny nor break. Only how the foundation of this nation could be broken was that it was broken from within. Mm. And it does not come from any outside source. Even our money says in God we trust. And we as a nation must realize that the foundation of this nation has been broken because we have allowed any and everything to creep in to this nation and we call it right. Mm. The destiny of our future is not in the hands of others. But it is in the heart of this nation, in its people, in the entirety. But the heart of the people of God in this nation has turned to wickedness. They are come to a place of complacency. We have allowed too much to go on in this nation. And I'm not doing a political speech. I'm doing a message that will convict your heart that you can see what is going on in our nation while we slumber and sleep. And God is saying it's high time that we wake up and realize that we are in imminent danger. A lot of times we, we, we believe that we are the most powerful nation in the world. Yes, our military is the most powerful. Economic, we're the most powerful. But the Bible says it's not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And we have allowed the spirit of God to slip out of our nation and go to other nations. Because we 
want to sit back on the seat of do nothing. We want to be like they did in the Old Testament, called evil good and good evil. But God is saying it's time for this nation and God's people to turn back to him with fasting and praying and seeking his face again. When was the last time you've been on your face before God? When was the last time you turned over your plate? Some of us, we can't even turn over our plate an hour before we're in the refrigerator looking for a little sandwich. <laughs> Stuff that we don't even like, we eating it. And the Bible says this only comes by fasting and praying. That's why the church is so weak, because we don't have enough folks that are fasting and praying and seeking God's faith. We have no power in the church because there's no prayer. You come on Saturdays, you come on Wednesdays, but you're not praying at home. You're not praying with your children and telling them what is right. But when you come to church, you come with no power. Strike yeah. on the United States. 
not preempted me without cause. And we're still here not liking one another, talking about one another, backbiting, hating one another, jealous. God has said, I'm using nations to correct you. Hear my voice. Repent and turn to me. Iran says that they're going to attack also. China and Russia has already made a pact that if the United States ever attacked one of them, that they both would go in together to try to defeat America. And we're sitting here still with sin, still with hatred and malice, still walking like nothing's going on. And the foundation of our nation has been broken. And we're wondering how we're going to stay if we do not Just happy glad some of 
of y'all want to even move now to Washington and you happy glad that uh, they're getting ready to take off the marijuana law. <laughs> oh, see, I didn't call some of y'all. Some of y'all. I'm going to But let me teach you. The Bible said all things are lawful.
the workplace. Yeah. Yeah. In the schools, we done removed it out of prayer. Mm -hmm. They just passed the law last week. Prayer and righteousness was our security in the workplace. Now you wonder why, folks, because we can't pray. We can't even have signs in the post office say, in God we trust. There was a law that they passed that they made them take down a biblical sign at the post office. So that sign did not represent all religions. So therefore it must be taken down. They took that sign down. But now ever since they start taking down these signs, these things that represent God, now we find folks going up into the post office, shooting the post office up, going up in the school, shooting the schools up. Reason why is because we have taken God out of the world. Revelations 11. They are buying for 
for this land to happen. This is when the tribulation will take place. And our government is backing the division of Jerusalem, a two-state nation, Palestine and Israel. And the government in the Jerusalem will be divided. And we're pushing forward. And they do not look at the word of God. The word of God simply wants us not to take away or dishonor Israel. But we're doing it. Amen. Also get Zechariah 12. Revelation 11. Let me turn to it. Let me teach this and get you out of here. When I seen it, I was just disturbed. Revelation 11, 1 to 3. Read it, Josh, would you, if you have it. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. Uh -huh. And the angel stood, saying, Rise, uh -huh. and measure the temple of God, uh -huh. and the altar, uh -huh. and them that worship therein. Uh -huh. But the court, which is without the temple, come on. <coughs> He said, the court, that the court, which is without the temple, leave it out and measure not, for it has been given unto the Gentile. And the holy city shall they tread under their foot 42 months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy 1,203 scores days. He's telling them that Jerusalem will be divided and the Gentiles will try and be trodden under the feet the, the city of God. And we see it in black and white in Revelation, but our government is promoting a division. I will bless them that bless you and curse or dishonor them that dishonors you. That was an inheritance to Israel forever. And we're trying to go and go get what God has given them. Come on. We're fighting against God and we cannot stand. And our people are sitting back like nothing's going on because our minds have been conformed to the world's view. They're just giving up. They're just a little nation. No, they're not just a little nation. They're God's anointed people. When we begin to divide Israel, and I don't teach like this in church normally, but I need to, you to see the view. When we begin to divide Israel, then calamity will come on us. Every nation will wonder why we're not blessed. We wonder why our economic resources have dissipated within the last five years because reason why it's dissipated is because we're not blessing the children of God, children of Israel, but we're cursing them by dishonoring them. And we're sitting back at a, as a church and as a body of people and we're not even, we're not even calling on our governments and telling them, don't do this. You're saying that I only have one voice. My voice don't mean anything. But he told Rebecca and a whole nation of people, he told them to cry loud and spare not. Some of you need to get on the walls and begin to cry loud and spare not. Tell the people God, you're wrong. Amen. Amen. Do you have it, Zechariah 12? Start one and three. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth yes. and formeth the spirit of man within him. Keep going. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling mm -hmm. unto all the people around about, uh -huh. when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. Okay. What God was saying that he was going to make Judah, Jerusalem, he was going to make it a burden to everyone that comes against it. We have 
are nations that are rising up that you not know even now. When it speaks of Mog and Gog, it speaks of the northern kingdom. Do you not know from Jerusalem to Moscow is a straight line north? When he talks about Mog and Gog coming against Israel, go to the old map, Mog and Gog is uh, Russia. Coming against Israel. We have the Russian Confederacy. We have just a few months ago, European Union, the lady, the lady Ursula Merkel of Germany went down to Iran, had a meeting with the Iranian leader, saying to her, saying to them, said, we want to make a covenant after Israel is gone. We want to make it now. Because we know that Israel will not be here. So we got the European Union also. We're sitting back and praying. We're not calling attention to our leaders that we are going the wrong direction. Do you not know that God, God allows U-turns? And it's time for America and it's time for the people of God to make a U-turn back to God. <laughs> Sitting back. The Bible says that there will be the king of the east shall rise up and bring a 200 million man army. Do you know not that China now can feel 200 million men? That is over half country. Men, women, and children. 1.5 billion people they have. We have a little more than 300, 300 million people. So if they rise up, that's, well, that's two-thirds of the whole population of the United States. And we're still playing games with God when God has already warned us that they will rise and they will invade. That they will do Foundation under us is breaking because of immorality. We're still doing the same jump that we did five years ago. There's still no growth in us. Third thing that the United States, and as I get ready to close you, the Bible says, be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The third thing that is destroying the foundation of America is that we are conforming to the world. And God is telling us not to conform to worldly views and not to conform to what folks think. Instead of conforming, uh, we have to have a renewing of our mind. Somebody need to tell God, God, I need you to renew my mind. Because my mind is conformed to the world system. What the world thinks and what the world says. And the world is calling things that are good, evil. Well, I'm asking God to begin to conform my mind. Because God, if you conform my mind, mm, that I'll be able to transform in the midst of a dark situation. Uh, when the enemy is coming in like a flood, I won't have to run to the hills because my foundation is on a sure foundation. And no matter what comes and no matter what goes, I'm going to be steadfast.